السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والذين تابعيه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد. How's everyone? May you sound like you're asleep already. It's only 7:15. How's everyone? الحمد لله. جزاك الله خيرا for coming out. I have to thank you first and foremost. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Whoever is not thankful to people, then he is true, not, truly not thankful to Allah." Man la nishkur Allah, man la nishkur nas. Whoever is not thankful to Allah is not the one that's the one that's not thankful to people. So, inshallah Taala, <clears throat> what I want to discuss with you: How many of you have ever heard of Christmas? <laughs> Raise your hand. If you haven't heard of Christmas, you've never left your house. All of us know about Christmas. Now. To you, what do you think Christmas means here in America? Raise your hand. This is interactive. I don't like to lecture. I, I hate lecturing. I like to interact. I like to talk with you. What do you think Christmas means in America? What is it about? Celebrating the birth of Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. Coming together for holidays, merry merriment, as they call it. Right? Anything else? I mean, what is Christmas all about? This is the biggest holiday in America. What's it about? The birth of Jesus. Again, how many of you would agree that it's about the birth of Jesus? Raise your hand. I'm glad we're doing this. Because this is the, the <clears throat> generally known idea, is that Christmas is revolving around the birth of Jesus Christ. As we say, Isa alayhi salam. Now, little do you know, and little do any average American or average Christian know, the real roots of Christmas, or Christ Mass, and the origins of Christmas trees, and mistletoe, and yuletide carols, and caroling, and gingerbread cookies, and uh, what are some of the, oh, Santa Claus, I can't forget about Santa Claus, I gotta tell you about Santa Claus. All of these things, when you understand what their origins is, you'll realize why today, in the khutbah, my emphasis was on... Did anybody know, was anybody here in the khutbah today? Mm -hmm. What was I talking about? The hadith of Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam when he said, Man tashabaha liqawmin fahuwa minhum That whoever imitates a people is one of them. And this is very important in Islam. How we conduct ourselves, especially with these types of origins. There's actually a very good book for any of you who want to read about this hadith of the Prophet والسلام, Imam Dahadi Rahimullah Ta'ala wrote a very good treaty on this idea, on this hadith of the Prophet والسلام, and a lot of it is about these festivals and things of this nature that we see going on. Now, the popular idea is that Christ was born on December 25th, that's why Christians celebrate Christmas or the world celebrates Christmas. How many of you agree with that fact? Jesus was born on December 25th. He was not. He was not. There's no evidence for this fact. The actual evidence is that he was born in a warmer time of the year. And according to the Quran, he was born in a warmer time of year. The date, the date palms were ripe, etc. This is during a warm time of the year. According to even Christian scholars, there's a difference of opinion whether he was born in September, whether he was born maybe in March. Sometime in a warm time of the year he was born. Why? Because they were out in the open. They were out in the open. According to the biblical uh, uh, story, they were out in the open. They were under the stars, the wise men came and saw them, all these good things. So, December the 25th did not become known as Jesus' birthday until the year 350. 350, when Pope Julius I declared that we will have Christ's Mass. Christ's Mass means the Mass for Christ in His birth on December the 25th. 350. 350. And a lot of scholars are even debatable about what year Jesus was born in. Whether he was born in 2 BC, 3 BC, 3 AD, somewhere around that time, but no one will ever say December 25th, the year one, Jesus was born. It's not, not known until the year 350. And the reason why Christianity came to adopt, came to adopt Christmas on December the 25th was that Roman pagans and Northern European uh, um, religions we're celebrating festivals during this time of the year already. There were already festivals happening this, during this time of the year called Saturnalia. Saturnalia 
were festivals that were held at this time of year. Friend, Lou Prentice, who was a fat, jolly guy, and he gave Santa the big beard, chubby face, red cheeks, and then gave him his bright Coca-Cola red fur-trimmed suit. And thus, the modern Santa Claus was born. Part uh, Christian crusader, part pagan god, and commercial item. This is Santa Claus. This is the origins of Santa Claus. So when you think it's, when you think it's something that's harmless, you have to realize the detriment that's coming behind it, what the real roots and origins of it. And that is the trick that has been played on generation after generation. When the Meccans were told that their worship was wrong, what, did they, what was their response? This is what our fathers used to do. This is what has been done for so long. What is the big deal? It's harmless. It's harmless. It's been done for so long. This is the idea that has been given to us. Look, this Santa Claus guy is harmless. He's harmless. When we don't understand his true origins are pagan at their very instinct. And what does he do? He teaches children the idea that who's watching them? Not Allah. That Santa's watching. Santa becomes this guy, Woden. This is part of the Woden theology. That Woden watches and sees everything that you do. And that he travels through the sky in the autumn, which has now become December or, or Christmas time. That he travels around the world only giving good to those who have been good. Have you heard that before? He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He knows if you've been naughty or nice. This is all teaching our children shirk. Outright shirk. 100%. For them to perceive that Santa sees everything that they do. They want to act good for Santa. When this is purely taking them away from the deen of Allah Azawajal, and knowing that only Allah sees what they do. Only Allah can give them benefit or give them any harm. So when you think Santa is harmless, Santa is not harmless. He's teaching our children outright shirk. And the benefits of giving them gifts, I, I feel sorry for these parents. Because all, when I was a child, I grew up celebrating Christmas. And I thought Santa did all this hard work of putting these gifts on my, uh, under my tree. When it was my parents who were doing all this. So I had more respect for Santa Claus than I did for my parents. I had more respect for Santa than I did my own parents. So this is a very detrimental teaching to be teaching to our children. So we have to understand that all of these things come back to pagan origins. And as I was saying in um, the khutbah today, that the Prophet والسلام, said, Man That whoever imitates a people, he is one of them. We have to understand how deep these roots go. The average American has no idea. This is a commercial celebration now. It, uh, Christmas and almost every other holiday has become commercialized. They use it to sell things. They use it to make money. But at its very root origins is evil. Is evil. And in Islam, we do everything we can to differentiate ourselves from that. The Prophet ﷺ said, as I said today, Khalifu al mushrikeen Be different from them. Distinguish yourself from them. Don't be like them whatsoever. So during this time of year when everybody is running around with joy and merriment and singing Christmas carols and drinking eggnog and all of these things that they seem to be harmless, you should know at the end of the day the detriment that it is doing to society. It is teaching society at the core of everything is number one, paganism, that Santa's watching you, that all these other things are going on, and number two, to be selfish. To be selfish, that it's all about what I can get, what I can give, what I can spend. It becomes totally about dunya, dunya, dunya. The two greatest things that can destroy your akhirah. Love of dunya and worshipping something other than Allah Azza wa Jal. These are the things that destroy your akhirah. Worshipping something other than Allah determines you're going to be in hellfire forever. Love of dunya will make your life miserable and it will make your death miserable. Because love of this world is one of the causes of having a bad death. A bad death, one of the bad reasons for having a bad ending to your life is love of this world. Love of this world. And this is something the Prophet ﷺ said when he said that um, and in the end of a long hadith that your enemies would not be afraid of you anymore. They would have, uh, uh, um, what is the word, they would have some um, dominance over you and that Allah will have placed wahan in your heart. And the companions didn't understand this word wahan. They said, what is this word wahan? He said, wahan is habba dunya wa kiraat al that you will love this world so much and you will hate death. You will hate death. And the love of this world is going to destroy your death. It's going to destroy your akhirah. And this is what Christmas teaches you. It teaches you to love this world. What you can get, all I can get. As much as I can get. Santa, just give it all to me. And we have to understand that this is going to kill us. There was a man 
from amongst the Salaf, uh, amongst the, the Tabi'een. There was the, the Khalifa came to uh, uh, a town and he asked, he came to Mecca and he asked, is there anyone here that met any companion? Is there any companion here or anyone that met any of the companions? That knew any of the companions of the Prophet They said, there's one man, Ibn Hazm. So they took him to Ibn Hazm and he asked him a question, very simple question. He said, why do we hate death so much? Why do we hate death? What is it about death that we despise so much? He said, you have spent your life establishing yourself here in this world while you have been destroying your akhirah in the process. He said, so one does not want to leave that which they have established for that which they have destroyed. One does not want to leave that which they have established for that which they have destroyed. This is why you hate death. Because death takes you away from this world. Death takes you away from what you've built for so long here, and it takes you to something that you're not ready for. You haven't prepared for. You've done nothing for it. SubhanAllah. This is what these things teach us. These are what these ideas bring, is that the next life is being destroyed for us, and therefore we don't want to go to it. We think that all of these things are harmless, and wallahi, brothers and sisters, they're not harmless. They are very detriment at their core. Detrimental at their core. So when you see your kids drawing these Christmas trees in school and they come home, you think it's nothing but a tree. It's much more than a tree. The tree symbolizes worshipping something other than Allah. Therefore, we should prevent our children from these things. We should do it in a way that is, that is very clear. Because one thing that I have a very big problem with is that here in the West, you put your children in public schools thinking that they should be safe from irreligiosity because we live in a country where church and state are supposed to be separated. But that is not actually the fact. Church and state are only separated by name, only separated on paper. Because when you look at these things that go on, celebrating Valentine's Day, it's religious at its core, paganism, celebrating Christmas, hanging up Christmas trees, singing Christmas carols, paganistic, religion, this is all being incorporated in our children, so we need to be very careful. You should have no problem going to your children's school and saying, look, teaching my children the subject you teach them is no problem. But when it comes to these things like Valentine's Day, Christmas, Easter, my child is going to opt out. If you're having a Christmas party at school, let me know ahead of time. They're not coming on this day. They won't be here because we are Muslims and we don't mix these things. We don't put these things into our practices. My child will not partake in this. If you do that in a very determined yet wise manner, then the school should give you some concession. If not, then you are right. Then guess what? You go to the school board. You push this thing all the way up the ladder. Because if not, then our children are continue to be affected and inflicted by these things, thinking that they're harmless. When all these things are doing are taking them away from the deen of Allah Azzawajal and causing them to have love for this world. Because all these holidays are coming commercial at their core. And love of this world is killing our youth. It's killing our youth. The glitz and glamour of this life and of these lifestyles are killing our youth. And we should teach them to love Allah Azzawajal more than they love anything else. And to know that this world is not guaranteed. Nothing in this world is guaranteed except death. Death is the only thing I can guarantee any one of you, that you will die. Everyone believes in death. There's not a person on this planet that doesn't believe in death. The Hindus even believe in death. Even though they believe in this reincarnation, they believe that you will die. Atheists believe in death. Jews believe in death. Christians believe in death. Everybody knows death is real. Therefore, one man came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him about the hour. He said, when will the hour come? When will the hour happen? You know what he said? He pointed to the youngest man in the group. He pointed to a child in the group. And he said, before this one becomes old, all of your hours will have begun. Before this one becomes old, all of your hours will have initiated. Meaning that when you reach death, when you enter into death, this is your hour. This is the beginning of your akhir. This is the beginning of it. This is the beginning of it. And we should know that that is a reality. Um, on the way here, I was listening to a story, and I'll finish with this, of... Mu'adh ibn Jabal, radhi Allah an, masha'Allah, may Allah azza wa jal give Mu'adh ibn Jabal one of the highest ranks in Jannah. Mu'adh ibn Jabal was with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam for a very long time. He fought in all the battles. He defended Islam with his very life in many occasions. But he died in his bed. And as he was dying, as he was dying, he said, and this was what he was known to have said, Marhaban al maut Welcome the death. Come, welcome. I am welcoming you into my home. I looked for you many times in my life. I tried to find you many times in my life, but you avoided me. But now that you're here, welcome. You are the most pleasing thing to my eyes right now. This is my death. So this is the, 
the, the end of a believer. A believer ends his life like this. He lives his life beautifully, worshiping nothing but Allah Azza wa Jal. And therefore, his greatest desire is to meet the one to whom he loves. To meet the one whom he loves. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever loves to meet Allah, then Allah loves to meet them. Whoever hates to meet Allah, then Allah hates to meet them. Aisha radiallahu anha said, what do you mean, O Messenger of Allah? There's not one of us that doesn't dislike death. We dislike death. Does that mean we dislike meeting Allah? He said, that's not what I meant. He said, what I meant is that, that at the end of your life, if you see death in your face and you are pleased with it, and you're pleased with the end that you meet, then you're loving to meet Allah. Because you know that this is what's, what is next. Therefore, Allah loves to meet you. But when death comes to you and you despise that death, you cringe from that death, you love to come back to this life, or you seek to stay in this world, then it's because you are displeased with the decree of Allah in your life, and you don't wish to meet Allah, therefore Allah does not wish to meet you. So we ask Allah that Allah Azza wa Jalla gives us a beautiful life, pleasing to Him, worshipping Him, and that He causes us to have a pleasing death that is pleasing to Him. But we need to be careful with these holidays. These holidays are evil, all of them. If you want me to go through all of them, from Christmas to Easter to Valentine's Day, to St. Patrick's Day. So all of them are evil, including birthdays. Be careful, brothers and sisters. Birthdays are pagan. Birthdays have pagan origins behind them, and I don't have the time because it's another lecture. But celebrating birthdays come from paganism. It does not come from Islam, nor anything Islamic, or Christianity, or anything of the sorts. It's pagan at its very origin. So please, be aware, protect your children, because Allah has given you responsibility. Ya ayyuhaladina that Allah has commanded you, O oh, you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire. So we have to protect our children from this, insha'Allah ta'ala. And may Allah Azawajal give us the tawfiq to do so and to raise up children who will be pious and righteous in this life and the next. And as they say, we always leave the best for last. So I will turn it over to our dear Sheikh uh, Walid, insha'Allah, for some closing remarks. Jazakallah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.